Hey everybody, Brooks from Drag Times here. In today's video, I got a Tesla Model S P100D versus my Model 3 Performance. And you might think, why in the world would you do that race? It's not even close. But before you fast forward to watch the races, let's just talk about how this race might be a little different. And the reason it's different is because the Model S P100D I'm testing is Dan's Model S and he's had it over three years and it's got 100,000 miles or close to 100,000 miles. So I wanted to wait till he hit 100,000 miles to do this test, but we had a track rented and we just did it anyways. He's got 97,000 miles on the car. And as most people in the EV world know, as the batteries don't last forever. So as time goes on, you lose a little range as the batteries uh, lose their life. And that's just a fact. So my question was, if the battery loses life and you get less miles per charge, does that affect the performance of the vehicle? Of course, quite a few years ago, Dan got one of the first P100Ds on the market. That's when we met. He buzzed me and says, hey, I got this brand new car. Can I bring it over and let's do some testing? Of course, I said, let's do it. He brought it over. We actually measured the max kilowatt power it was outputting at the time, and that was 567 kilowatt. Yeah, geez. This thing's flying. Here we go. Thing just ripped off zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds. Quarter mile says 10.8 at 124.5 miles an hour. And we also ran it down the quarter mile. Now, keep in mind, these quarter mile times, I think I was racing my Huracan, was before the Ludacris Plus update. So back then, he ran 1082, 122.93 miles an hour. <laughs> Over three years, there's been a ton of software updates, including performance updates to that car. And I'm not sure what his best time, but in my P100D, I was able to manage a 10.7 at 123 miles an hour and change. So at 97,000 miles, we took Dan's car out to the track and we took my Model 3 Performance. We had a generator there, so we were able to get, we were the top off the car to 100% charge. Dan's car at 97,000 miles now has a range of 285 miles. That's down from the initial range of 315 miles, roughly 10%. So with a 10% decrease in mileage, what does that correlate, or maybe it doesn't even matter about how much horsepower it makes. Well, we measured that as well. And the peak horsepower after 97,000 miles coming out of Dan's car was just 528 kilowatts. If you multiply that times 1.33, that's a 50 horsepower loss at close to 100,000 miles. Of course, each Tesla owner's experience of loss of range and power will vary depending on how they charge the vehicle 100%, supercharging, all that kind of stuff. It's definitely not like a rock solid calculation. I looked up around the internet and I found cars or Model X that had 300,000 miles and only lost 12.6% of range. So it's going to vary between everyone's, but today this is what we got. We got a loss of 50 horsepower and a loss of 10% of the range. And I wanted to see how that correlated into performance. So I thought, uh, you know, Model 3 performance versus the 100,000 mile P100 DB good race. And that's just what we did. Keep in mind when watching the races, I knew I was in the slower car and I was going after the reaction time to make it a more fair race. And I hit that tree pretty hard and Dan didn't quite hit it so hard. So you're gonna see it's kind of a lopsided race. Nevertheless, watch the races, then we'll come back and discuss the data.
right, so you saw the races. In the first race, I clipped off a .05 reaction time. They are not so good at .7, but nevertheless, he his car still launches. Now, it still comes off really hard. He's still hitting zero to 60 in like 2.5 seconds. However, on the top end, that's where the car starts to suffer and you see the drop in horsepower effect. So he ran an 11.009 and I ran an 11.6. Now the mile an hour difference is about three miles an hour. He did 117, I did 114. He was coming for me, but he didn't get me. I actually won by 0 0.06 seconds. Now in the second race was even worse. He had trouble getting his car into launch mode. Uh, I caught a 0.1 light, his was 1.3. So it's a really lopsided race. He wasn't able to catch me, but nevertheless, the data is there. He didn't even break into the tens and his mile an hour is down from 123 to about 117. That's roughly six miles an hour. And if you're into drag racing and quarter mile and knowledge, that definitely correlates to about a 50 horsepower loss. Now, of course, there could be some other variables that uh, would contribute to power loss over time. There might be motor fatigue or some other things with regards to the Tesla. I'm not an engineer. I don't really know about that stuff, but this is hard data right here. We got it all. Loss of 50 horsepower we have documented because you can see that when you enable ludicrous plus mode, you can see the peak power. Loss of 50 horsepower, and that correlates to the times, you know, 11 flat, 117, almost 118 miles an hour, before it runs running 10 7, 10 8 at 123 miles an hour, and the Model 3 is running, you know, mid 11s at 115. I have seen some other cars hit 117 mile an hour traps. That way might be a much more interesting race. I'm not sure why Model 3, my Model 3, is a bit slower. I do have the power update, by the way, for those of you, of course, were about to ask that question. Now, it might be interesting to get some other data points. For example, my Tesla Model S P100D has just approaching 50,000 miles. Now, I'm still able to get in the 10s in this car, but definitely not in the 10.7s. So maybe we can get some other data points on 50,000 miles or maybe even 150,000 miles if there are some P100Ds uh, out there with those kind of mileage as well. So there you go, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe, we'll keep the videos coming. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, do you think it's uh, acceptable to lose 50 horsepower on a car after 100,000 miles? How does that compare against regular combustion engine vehicles after 100,000 miles? Do you think they lose 50 horsepower? And do you think this is the future of EV technologies, uh, positives and drawbacks, uh, or will battery technology progress to where power losses uh, won't be significant? Thanks for watching.